Our gospel lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. And if there is a pew Bible nearby, I don't know if there is or not, um, but if there is one, you're more than welcome to grab one. And see if you notice whether or not a verse is missing. This is in John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. And our friends watching online, the scripture will be displayed on a screen, and you can look there to see if a verse is missing. So John chapter 5, starting at verse 1. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, called in Hebrew Bethsatha, which has five porticos. In these, in these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, stand up, take up your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll begin by asking you the same question that Jesus asked the man at the pool by Bethesda. Do you want to get well? Do you want to move on from a debilitating illness or a sense of malaise? Do you want to seek treatment for an addiction? Or would you like to be delivered from a routine in which you come home after work and collapse in front of the TV until it's time to go to bed and repeat the process all over again? Do you seek a way out of the rat race? A way out of the constant competition? So I ask you the same question that Jesus asked the man by the pool. Do you want to get well? Now, I would have to know you quite well and your situation quite well for me to ask you this question in real life. So rest assured about that to begin with. Because for me, simply to ask, do you want to get well, can be very hurtful to someone facing terminal or chronic illness who has tried every possible treatment and spent hours on the phone trying to get insurance to pay for all the treatments. And I don't ask this question also of someone who doesn't have access to basic health care. Do you want to be made well? It's the old cruelty of telling someone who doesn't have any boots to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. That's not what I hope to do this morning. What this sermon is about is when perhaps I do know you and your situation well enough that I can ask, do you want to be made well? Because in our prior conversations, you and I would both know that you have been offered a path to healing and wholeness, that there is a possible way out. Then the question is posed, do you want to be made well? And maybe the immediate reaction is the nod, yes, of course. It's like asking if you want the pandemic to be over. Yes, of course. But that, too, is a complicated question in a lot of ways. And maybe you say that, yes, you do want to be made well. But in reality, you really would rather remain in the same routines except maybe feel better about it. In our story this morning, Jesus goes by the pool of Bethsaza, or in other translations, Bethesda, and the pool is fed by an underground spring. And there's a legend, and you can find the legend in that missing verse, in the New Revised Standard Version and other contemporary versions of the Bible, it skips from verse 3 straight to verse 5. And that's because verse 4 was probably something that a scribe added to try to make the story make a little more sense with context. 
and they happen to know a legend about an angel at the Pool of Bethesda. And according to the legend, the angel would come and touch the waters, and they would be stirred up, and the first person to get into the waters would be healed. That's the legend about the pool. And it does explain, perhaps, the rest of the story a little bit. Like, why was the man so eager to get into the pool? Why did he complain about having no one to help him get into the pool once the water was stirred? And so what happens is that the pool and the surrounding area have all become a gathering place for anyone and everyone with some sort of sickness, some kind of malady. And they're all watching the surface of the water for the smallest sign of the rippling of the waves or a small bubbling from the underground spring or even a slight breeze. And any of that could cause everyone to stampede trying to get into the pool. Now, one commentator imagines the dialogue like this. Jesus says to the man lying on one side, knowing that he's been there all this time, do you want to be made well? And the man replies, no thanks. I think I'll just stay here on my pallet and wait for the waters to ripple. I've been here 38 years, and I know what to expect, and I know all the other people nearby. True, I'm probably not going to get better, but you know, I've gotten used to being here. So thanks all the same, Jesus, but I'll just lie here. I don't think he would say that, but would he think it? Because for him to answer yes to that question, do you want to be made well, means that somehow he has to say yes to a whole new life. William Sloan Coffin once said that if it is, that if it is hell to be guilty, it's even scarier to be responsible, response-able, able to respond to God's call, able to respond to the word and love of Jesus. And there's a whole other vision of the Pool of Bethesda that I like a lot better. And you might know it if you know Tony Kushner's play, Angels in America. It turns out that one of the main characters prior, his favorite place in Central Park, and indeed in all of New York City, is the Bethesda Fountain, south of the lake in Central Park. And I'm thankful that the, the scribes added verse 4, even if it wasn't part of the original manuscript, because thanks to verse 4, we have this whole legend about the angel of Bethesda and this beautiful sculpture in Central Park. Perhaps even thanks to verse 4, we have the lyrics of the wonderful spiritual wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. God is going to trouble the waters. And at the end of Angels in America, they break down that fourth wall between themselves and the audience. And they start talking. And they start talking about what the pool in Bethesda means to them. They talk about the Jewish legend, how this pool, Bethesda was a healing pool in Jerusalem until the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D., and the fountain stopped flowing. But when millennium comes, the fountain will flow again, and people can go into that pool to bathe. No longer is it only the first person who gets there in this rat race of competition, but it's whoever bathes in the fountain can be healed. It's a vision for the healing of the world. And it's so much better than this, I have to get into the pool first, I have to look out only for me. And we need a powerful vision to help us escape from the old routines. We need motivation to begin a whole new life. And we need motivation to know that once we respond to Jesus' invitation to stand up, take up our pallet, and walk, it means that we will have to get up and follow Jesus and involve ourselves in people's lives in ways that we might not be sure that we want, because to be whole, to be made well, means to be remembered, reconnected with God and with God's people and God's creation no more isolation, 
No more living my own private life where no one bothers me. To be whole means to be involved in whatever ways that you can be involved. And when it comes to overcoming our own pandemic mindset, I believe that we need to hear this invitation from Jesus to know that the final vision is one of healing and not scarce, limited resources that we have to fight over. But there is a counter-narrative to the narrative of status, of competition, to what Charles Campbell and others call the principalities and powers of this world. And that counter-narrative is the pattern of Jesus, reaching out to others in love, offering brand new community, offering a way forward. One of my favorite writers, Reynolds Price, describes a time when he had spinal cancer, and he underwent the lifetime, maximum lifetime amount of radiation that he could receive. And one night he had a vision. He was by the Sea of Galilee with Jesus and all the disciples. And Jesus all of a sudden noticed him and walked toward him and took water from the Sea of Galilee and started bathing all of Reynolds' surgical scars and the visual effects of his cancer. And then Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And he turned and walked away. And to Jesus' receding back, Reynolds Price had the audacity to say, but am I also cured? And then Jesus turned around and said, that too. And then Jesus turned back around to go back to the disciples. And then somehow in the mystery of space and time, Reynolds found himself back in his bed. He did remain a paraplegic for the rest of his life. But he also learned how to live with pain that was never below a six on the scale of one to ten. He figured out new routines. He sought help when he needed help. And he began the most productive period of his life that he ever had as a writer, including writing the memoir of his cancer journey called A Whole New Life. Dear friends, Jesus comes to us just as he came to that man by the pool. He gives us a new story to tell. He gives us a way of hope when we have had 38 years of old habits accumulated. And Jesus offers a path to a whole new life. All glory and praise be to our God. Amen.